Once upon a time, in feudal Japan, there lived an itinerant scrabble master and haikai poet named Basho. Basho made his living by traveling to the many castles throughout the land, hosting scrabble competitions. Because he walked to his various destinations, and was poor besides, he traveled light. This means he carried only a single Scrabble set on his journeys. Curiously, it was an American set from the late 1980s, but that perhaps is a story for another time. At the same time as making his living, Basho was also setting about revolutionizing the art of Haikai. Haikai in his time had become very artificial, a mere game. It was Basho's intention to put Haikai back on a more artistic footing. One day in 1686, he and a few of his disciples had gathered at his hut on the Sumida River in Fukagawa, just outside the city of Edo, which today we call Tokyo. It was the time of year called Regret for the Passing of the Spring, and in the distance the poets could make out the sounds of frogs plashing in the water. Basho was inspired to capture this frog moment in a most unusual way. Kawazu tobikomu mizunooto. A frog jumps into the water's sound. What made this innovative was that when Japanese poets mentioned frogs in poems, conventionally they did so because of the beauty and repute of their singing. To feature frogs for their more mundane frogginess was part of the revolution that Basho was trying to instigate. But the poem wasn't complete. It needed another image, a cap, to finish it. And curiously, the cap in this instance was to be the first line. One of the poets, Kikaku, made a recommendation for this cap. Yamabuki ya. Yamabuki is the Japanese golden rose which probably could have been seen blossoming in this season. Kikaku was never a favorite of Basho's. Besides having ideas of his own, his name was a nightmare for a scrabbler. Due to its plethora of Ks, it demanded that both blank tiles be used to spell it, leaving none for use anywhere else. You lumbering oaf, scowled Basho. At five foot nine inches, Kikaku towered over the diminutive master. That's not even close. Anyone else? There were no takers. After a period of silent musing, Basho cried, I have it. And he wrote out, Furuikeya, Old Pond. The disciples all agreed that, yes, this was much better. Basho had indeed revolutionized the genre, but not just with the way he treated frogs. He had also leaped away from the practice norms of writing haikai. For the pond was not there before him in time and space. The pond was in his mind. The pond was a remembered pond, recollected to serve as the perfect cap for the very real frogs. Basho hadn't captured a moment. He had created one. And he did so in reverse order. The pond didn't suggest the frogs. The frogs suggested the pond. This was the end of realism. And so Haikai was elevated 
from reportage to art. And to this he was willing to affix his name. Thank you.